cavemen sharpen pieces of flint and use them to shave their facial hair. Modern man can simply go purchase a pack of razor blades for his shaver. While several styles of shavers and blades exist, many men believe the traditional type of razor blade gives the closest shave of them all. They're paper thin, yet sharp enough and strong enough to cut through the coarsest beard. Razor blades are made from a stainless steel strip that's a mere four one thousandths of an inch thick. The strip first enters a punching machine that stamps out the overall blade shape. These dull-edged blades to be are called blanks. At this stage of the process, the stainless steel is very soft, as pliable as paper, so they now harden and strengthen it through a four-step heat treatment process. Step 1. They heat the blanks in a furnace to just over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 seconds. Step 2. They briefly submerge them in cold water. This is called quenching. Step 3. They chill them for about 20 seconds in a deep cooling chamber at a temperature of minus 58 Fahrenheit. All this progressively restructures the molecules, hardening the metal. However, the metal becomes brittle, necessitating reheating the blanks for 20 seconds. The now hard blanks then move through a printer, which applies the razor blade brand name. Gas flames instantly dry the wet ink. Now it's time for the blanks to become blades. They enter a grinding and polishing machine. Within it are three grinding stations which first sharpen the contour, then produce two super sharp cutting edges. The blades then pass through a polishing station that removes burrs left by the grinding. Until now, the blades have been connected to each other. As they exit this machine, a knife separates them. The factory's quality control lab pulls samples from the production line and checks among other criteria the quality of the grinding and geometrics of the cutting edges. Then every single blade the factory produces is examined for cutting edge defects. Technicians assemble blades in packs of up to 800, then shine fluorescent light on the two cutting edge sides. This makes defects visible. Blades that pass this inspection are washed with solvent to remove contaminants. Then dried. The now pristine razor blades go into a vacuum chamber. It draws a chromium-based coating onto the surface, rendering the cutting edges harder and more wear resistant. Next, spray nozzles apply a non-stick coating which will help the blades glide smoothly over the skin. To adhere the coating permanently to the blade surface, they bake it on for 20 minutes at about 660 degrees Fahrenheit. Quality control technicians test samples again, this time to ensure the blades meet strength specifications. This test machine measures the force required for the blade to cut a thick wad of wet paper to a certain depth. In production, workers submerge the razor blades in organic oil for about half an hour. This provides additional protection against corrosion. On the packaging line, the equipment wraps each blade individually in wax paper. The wax coating on the paper helps protect the razor blade against corrosion during storage. Wax paper is also stronger than regular paper, so the blade's razor-sharp edges don't cut through it. The edge of these razor blades are about 10 times thinner than a human hair. A blade typically lasts about six shaves, so the average male goes through quite a few, considering that over the course of his lifetime, he'll have spent more than 3,300 hours shaving his face.
Saturday on In the age of disposable razors, the Butterfly Safety Razor still has an edge. This precision metal tool is good for a lifetime of clean shaves. A few twists of the handle and the butterfly mechanism opens to allow cleaning and replacement of the blade. With it, getting rid of stubble is very little trouble. Invented in the last century, the Butterfly Safety Razor has done its part to prevent injuries. The blade can be replaced without actually touching the sharp edge. The butterfly doors also close around the blade for a safer shave. Also known as the twist to open razor, this grooming tool is anything but simple. It's comprised of about 20 parts. Production begins with solid zinc bars. They melt down the bars in a big cauldron. The machine then presses the melted zinc into a mold of three razor parts. The zinc instantly cools and solidifies into the shape of the parts. They're linked by more hardened zinc. A worker separates them, revealing a support structure for the blade, a framework for the butterfly flaps, and the outer casing for the blade support part. Breaking them free from one another leaves ragged edges, so a worker grinds them smooth. There are still a few blemishes to rub off the surface. The parts toss about in a tumbler filled with abrasive synthetic pellets. After about half an hour, the surface irregularities are gone. Next, a computerized drill bores into the center of a spinning aluminum dowel as a second tool contours the outside. This transforms the dowel into nuts for adjusting the blade. They shape the aluminum handle the same way. Now they apply a more durable chrome finish. This process involves three electroplating baths. The first one gives the parts a copper coating. Then it's into the nickel bath. In this case, nickel is a go-between kind of finish. It will allow chrome to stick to the part. After a chemical treatment for a matte finish, they plunge the parts into the chrome bath. A quick rinse in water reveals the result. The parts now have a resilient matte chrome finish. Once all the parts have been fabricated, it's time to assemble the butterfly razor. A worker drives a threaded insert into the outer casing for the blade support. She installs a similar insert in the adjustment nut we saw being fabricated early on. These inserts enable her to screw the two parts together. She sets aside the nut and blade support assembly. She slides a spring onto the razor's center rod. This spring pushes up the rod to open the butterfly flaps. She dabs thread lock glue on the threaded section of the butterfly flap support part and then screws the part to the razor's center rod. Next, she installs the butterfly flaps on the support part. The various sub-assemblies now need to come together. She begins with the blade support structure and brass stem. She attaches a spring and slides the adjustment nut assembly onto the stem. She inserts a plastic washer into the assembly, allowing her to screw the handle onto the adjustment nut. She now pops the center rod with the butterfly doors into the assembled framework and adjusts the assembly. She threads a set screw onto the center rod and into the handle. The screw will prevent the user from turning the handle too far and compromising the butterfly mechanism. An end cap attached to the base holds the center rod in place. Finally, she tests the handle and screw rod mechanism that opens the butterfly flaps and confirms that they're fully functional. It's taken about 20 minutes to produce this butterfly safety razor. With regular cleaning between blade changes, it should last for many years. 
Good thing, because there will always be a growing need for this reusable shaving tool.